Thank you. Oh, I'm on the clock. First of all, let me say this. Uh, thanks for still being here. It's hot. I know. So I appreciate you still being here. It's a tough task to be the last one speaking because there were some tremendous people speaking and now it's up to me, which is going to be kind of tough. But let's get started. Now, trust the unknown. With that picture on there, that sounds a little weird. I know because you see that face, you don't want to trust them. But hear me out, it just, it's not going to last longer than 18 minutes. So, when I was asked to talk here at TEDx, uh, it was quite clear to me that I wanted to talk about the reason why I'm actually on this very stage. Because the reason why I'm here is quite simple. It's this right there. The incredible success of the American football show called Run Football on Prozim Max and Prozim. And if I say the incredible uh, success, obviously some of you probably saw it, some didn't, but let's define what kind of success the show had. Um, therefore, you have to understand American football was a niche sport in Germany. What does that mean? There was no professional league. Um, there's ju it's just an amateur football game. There's no money to be made. And it was not on public TV, on free TV. There was no chance really for the audi audience to consume American football. That all changed in 2015 when ProSieben Zadain said, we're gonna broadcast the entire NFL season all the way through. And it's interesting to see that even though it was a niche sport, the viewers, and this is obviously important for TV people to know, went from an average about 250,000 viewers a game for a regular season game up to half a million in 2018. That's a big jump from 15 to 18 to go from a quarter million to half a million. And, and if, you, if you look at the playoffs, where it's getting closer to the big Super Bowl, the championship game, it goes up to 1.5 million viewers on a big TV station. Then the Super Bowl is, is seen by almost 2 million people when it was about a million people in 2013. So as you can see, there was a huge success when it comes to the amount of viewers. But that's not all. Um, on top of that, the TV show won some awards. Just uh, this year, we won the Deutsche Fernsehpreis, the German TV prize for the best sports show, which usually belongs to football or uh, fußball, soccer, or other Olympic sports, but never American football. For whatever reason, we won it. And um, not only that, also three members of the broadcasting crew wrote a book about American football. Now remember, it's a niche sport, right? Nobody gives a crap about football. It used to be that way. I gotta watch my language, I'm sorry. So, three books were written. Two of them went into the top 10 best-selling books. One number 10, one number one. That's insane. And more so, it's insane that two members of, of the broadcasting crew went on to become um, TV station faces, one for RTL, which is the big enemy of Posim, and one for Posim. And both have their own physical game shows. So there was success for the show itself and also for the individuals that were on, on stage. So the success was there. But what was the magic plan behind it? See, a lot of people ask me, why was it so successful? What was the plan? Was it a PR plan? Was there a great marketing concept? Was it the game? Or maybe a revolutionary productional concept? Well, I can tell you this. Being there from day one, second one, it was not a great PR concept. There was not a great or well thought through marketing plan behind it. Was it the game? Yes, of course, NFL football is an exciting game. It's complicated if you're not used to it. A lot of people tell me, oh, coach, this, I can't understand it. All these breaks, and I don't understand what's going on. So was it the game? Yes and no. The NFL delivers some great insight, great views. It's a great sport. But that's not the main reason. So what was the secret? Well, if you look at this guy here, you're going to say, who, who in the world is this guy? Yeah, he was part of the... Uh, revolutionary concept because 
Um, he is our net man. And this is one thing we did at Run Football is we implemented social media in real time into the TV show, which allowed the viewers to get a better possibility to interact and become part of the show. And this concept now has been copied by many, many other TV stations, sports shows, and entertainment shows. Um, so, you, yes. I, I took this picture because this is the result of the interaction between our viewers and the net man, Ikea. I mean, they sent us some crazy pictures, and it's funny. That's why I took this picture. But I said the revolutionary concept was to implement social media into the show. So was Ikea, Christoph Ikea Domisch, his nickname is Ikea, the guy to the left, was he a revolutionary concept? Was he planned? Of course not. I mean, look at him. Uh, you can't plan that. <laughs> he was against all odds. As you can see, he's more of a radio face than a TV face. <laughs> I know that's bad. I know that's bad. Plus, he was not or he is not an expert of the topic American football. But, and on, on top of that, he was never trained to be an on-air face. He works for Ran, but he was not trained to be an on-air face. Nor did he have the desire to be on the show. He didn't want to be on the show, but he ended up there and was pretty successful. But here's the thing. He represented a tremendous part of the viewers that just like him had no interaction with the game itself and never played the game, never coached the game, but for some reason loved the game. And, and that made possible possible that the viewers at home, they can identify themselves in this guy to the left, not into the guy on the right. So it allowed them to connect and identify themselves because this guy to the left, Ike, he had no idea about football, but he was real. He was what you call authentic. And authenticity is, is a unique selling point. You know, if you're in business, everybody wants to know, what's your unique selling point? Well, authenticity is a good, unique selling point to have. And that's what Ica was. So now in a world where everything is getting so artificial, authenticity is a very famous word. Now, I just, now I'm getting off topic. Um, I just saw the other week, I think two weeks ago, it was on the media that our word is getting so artificial that everybody in the Western world, every person, takes in about five grams of microplastic a week. Were you aware of that? That's a credit card you eat a week. That's gross. You'd be like, hmm? But no, that's not nice. And not only the physical world is getting more and more artificial, but also, for example, the internet. I mean, look at, look at Instagram profiles nowadays. Now, the people on Instagram that have their fine profiles, they don't look even close to the real person. It seems like nowadays, nobody wants to be themselves anymore. So authenticity is a great, unique selling point. So, um, you could argue and say, well, were there many unqualified people on the TV show? Yes, there were. Why were they there? Well, they were there based on potential. See, Ica, the guy with the long hair, he knows social media very well. I know American football very well. But both of us had no concept of how to properly run a TV show. We had no idea. But we did. Why did we do it? Because Alexander Rösner, the senior vice president of sports, he saw one thing in us that you can't teach. He saw potential. And... Uh, he let the potential develop and grow into a new version, a new concept of TV host. Um, so he trusted, really, what he did is he trusted the biggest unknown factor in business, which is the human being. And, and that concept obviously translates as well to sports as to other businesses. I'm, I'm, till two days ago, I was the head coach of the French national team. I decided to step down. Some people know it. And, uh, but it's the same thing. 
as a football coach, I'd much rather go over potential than qualification because here's what you can do with uh, potential is you can train it. But let me not get too much off topic. Um, nowadays in business, where it's, and I hear it in, in, in a lot of meetings with other business leaders, they always tell me, coach, it's so hard to find qualified personnel nowadays. Well, then the paradigm shift needs to be, maybe you need to go for more potential over qualification, right? Um, because this is, this is basically what Mr. Alexander Rösner, the vice president of, of, of football, did. He went for potential and trained it. And you see the quote right there, the only thing worse than training employees and losing them is to not train them and keep them. So he said, we're going for potential, we train it, we give it room to grow. And um, some of the employees, some of the on-air crew members stayed, like me, some left, like Frank Buschmann. He left for another TV station. And, you know, if you're in business, if you create a business, business or you are thinking about starting your business, this is something you should probably keep in mind. If you, if you have employees and you train them and you, they leave you, you got to ask yourself why they left, which leads to employee motivation. And in order to understand employee motivation, um, there are two forms of motivation. Extrinsic motivation that is coming from the outside, such as was there enough money? Was there, were there enough benefits? Was that maybe the problem why they left? Or even more important nowadays, was there enough intrinsic mo motivation, which is the motivation that comes from the inside and has the right answers to questions such as, is my job making me happy or sick? Do we work as a team? Is there, am I being valued by coworkers and superiors? Is there feedback and communication? So, um, that being said, if, if, um, if I would have to sum it up, the reason why we are successful, or what I'm trying to say is, whether you in, if you want to have success in sports, and I'm a football coach, and I also had businesses, such as sport marketing companies, um, every business that involves people, okay, you have to be able to trust the unknown factor, which is the human being. And therefore, you have to find the right human being. That's the key. So maybe you want to go more based on potential than qualification. And if you found the potential, okay, you got to make sure you train it and you take care of them. Okay, because they are your biggest asset. And to me, that's ultimately the secret of the success for this show, Run Football. Thank you very much.